Welcome to the Heidi Thorne Show. I'm your host, Heidi Thorne, and in this podcast, I share my real-world self-publishing and small business experience with you. Before we get started, I just want to remind you to like, comment, share, follow, and subscribe. Now let's get on with today's show. I would say that at least a few times a month, I run across a post on social about getting their self-published books in independent or indie bookstores. At least they're not aiming for the big chains like Barnes & Noble. Maybe they're looking at indies because they correctly recognize that getting in the big chains isn't going to happen. But aiming for smaller doesn't mean they'll be successful in getting shelf space in indie stores. I'm going to bust some myths that self-published authors have when it comes to working with indie bookstores as well. I'll explain how indie bookstores work and how they're battling Amazon if they can. Myth number one, indie bookstores are interested in your book because you're an indie author. Self-published or independently indie published authors may feel some rebel kinship with indie bookstore owners. We're doing our own thing without the big guys. Popular movies such as You've Got Mail in 1998 portray indie bookstores as blissful places, pitting them against the big bad bookstore chains. Today, it's the big bad bookstore chains and the indie bookstores against an even bigger baddie of Amazon. Being an indie bookstore merely means that it is not part of a bigger retail organization. That is all. Though they may have special collections based on topics or their philosophical leanings, they usually carry the same books as the bigger retailers. It does not mean that they specialize in or will even consider independently self-published books. Like their bigger bookstore brethren and rivals, they want to sell what will sell. If you have no sales track record that proves your book will make them money, they cannot afford to waste valuable retail real estate, which they have to pay for, on your untested book. It is incorrect to assume that they are here to serve you and market your book. Myth number two. Indie bookstores will buy inventory of your self-published book. It is obvious that many new self-published authors don't understand how bookstores work or how retail and business work either. They think that bookstores buy books directly from authors. Nothing could be farther from reality. Bookstores, the big chains, and indies too buy books from wholesale distribution partners. The largest and leading book distribution partner in the U.S. is Ingram. Bookstores of all sizes work with Ingram. They get favorable prices and support services from Ingram and other partners like Ingram. Stores usually buy inventory from their wholesale distribution partners on a seasonal or other planned schedule. This way they can have enough stock to fulfill demand particularly for big buying seasons like the holidays. Unless demand warrants it, such as when a surprise hot new release comes out, they don't buy in fits and starts throughout the year. This organized buying scheme helps them plan their budget, marketing, and even store layout and warehousing. Buying, researching, and ordering takes time and effort. By consolidating these functions, they save time and labor costs. Planned and organized buying also helps them take advantage of any special pricing and promotion programs that might be offered through the wholesale distributor and the publishers that the distributor represents. When a random self-published author wanders into a bookstore, pitching the owner or book buyer with the prospect of having to do a one-off order for stock of a few lousy copies of their book. They are asking the bookstore for too much for too little reward. If you have no previous track record of sales, how will you convince a store owner it's worth their while to spend extra time and effort on your book? Because your book is so special compared to the millions of other books available? Because you're so special and you've self-published a book like millions of other authors around the world? Some indie bookstore owners with a soft heart and commitment to community may be inclined to shelve a copy or two of a local self-published author's book, but only on consignment. Do not take this as an endorsement of the value of your book 
or their commitment to you. Don't ever promote that this bookstore is carrying your book. They are not. It is only on consignment. Consignment means that you will not be paid for those few copies on the shelf until those books actually sell. Some stores may require that if the books don't sell within a certain amount of time, you will take them back, or they will be trashed if you don't retrieve them. Even if you do get the books back, they could be shop-worn and unsuitable for, to be sold elsewhere. One self-published author I encountered was planning a whole investment in retail merchandising, including display pieces, for the purpose of approaching bookstore owners. She wanted primo exposure and thought it would make owners excited to help her market her book. Even though I admire the drive to hope that a bookstore owner would make any special effort or a lot space to sell an untested product is presumptuous. Myth number three. You'll make more money selling your self-published book through indie bookstores. An author was incensed that an indie bookstore was asking for a 50-50 split on consignment sales of her book. Why was the bookstore asking for so much? They weren't really doing anything to make the sale, right? Now, I'm getting incensed just thinking about how little the author understands about how business and bookstores work. Here's what the 50% to the indie bookstore goes towards. Retail, space, rent, or mortgage, labor costs to run the store, accounting, marketing to get people in the store, software, store maintenance, security. The list is extraordinary. These authors think that they should get 100% of the list price or give some paltry percentage, like 10 or 15% to the bookstore owner. So what is an appropriate split? Ingram Spark, which is the bookstore-friendly self-publishing platform, suggests that 55% discount off the list price is the standard that bookstores expect. Ingram Spark will allow authors to offer as low as 30% discount. However, they note that 30% is considered a short discount, meaning that it is not enough of an incentive to make a bookstore want to sell your book. With Ingram, who is the parent to Ingram Spark, being the largest and leading book distributor in the United States and probably the world, I think they know what the bookstores really want. Myth number four. Expanded distribution on KDP will make your book available in bookstores. When you make the book you publish on Kindle Direct Publishing or KDP available for expanded distribution, your book can be made available to bookstores, libraries, and schools. Notice that I carefully worded that as two not in. Expanded distribution does not mean that your KDP self-published book will be shelved in any bookstore. In fact, I can almost guarantee it won't be. Indie bookstores are anti-Amazon since Amazon is their arch rival for sales. So they don't want to fulfill customer orders for books self-published on KDP. If they actually did the sale, they also probably wouldn't make a whole lot of money on that one-off sale either. You can probably also guess that they don't want a book on their shelves that is identified as being self-published through Amazon. So if you wander into an indie bookstore with copies of your self-published books that you did through KDP, they're going to politely, or maybe not so politely, show you the door. If it's important for you to have your book in indie bookstores, you'd be better off self-publishing through Ingram Spark. Indie bookstores are already working with Ingram Spark's parent of Ingram in ordering inventory. If you self-publish on Ingram Spark, you can make your book available to Amazon too, though you'll make lower royalties. You need to understand the bookstore landscape too. Bookstore sales, independent and chain stores, have been decreasing over time. From 1992 to 2016, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences reports that the count of all bookstore establishments fell from 13,136 stores to 6,448 stores in 2016. Statista reports that the number of independent bookstore companies has hovered between 1,400 and 1,900 since 2009. But in 2020, there were 1,700 independent bookstores in the U.S., even that doesn't really tell the whole story. Print book sales, especially and surprisingly during the pandemic, remain strong, just not strong from the physical bookstore side of the equation. In 2018, bookstore sales in the U.S. amounted to $10.2 billion. 
a decrease from 17 billion a decade earlier. And for 2020, Statista shows bookstore sales at 8.84 billion. We need to talk about bookshop.org. Before you watched or listened to this program, did you know about bookshop.org? If you did, great. If not, I'm not surprised. What is bookshop.org? Bookshop.org is a book selling site whose goal is to provide support to indie bookstores so that they can survive against Amazon. They report having about 1,100 indie bookstores participating in the program. Here's how it works. Readers can shop for books on the site. If the reader wants to support a local indie bookstore, they can search for a store and order through that store's bookshop page. The bookstore can get 30% of the cover price for that sale. For sales that are not pegged for a particular store, the sales are pooled and 10% is paid among participating bookstores. Orders are fulfilled through wholesale distributor Ingram. Just another reason self-published authors interested in bookstore sales should use Ingram Spark to self-publish. It sounds like a great way to support your local bookstores without having to go to the store. And for those who are anti-Amazon, Bookshop provides an alternative. If you haven't heard of Bookshop, it's probably because they're still relatively new since they launched sometime around early 2020. Bookshop promotes a lot of competing independent bookstores on one site. So why would any indie bookstore want to promote a site that promotes all their competitors? As Publishers Weekly reports, about 700 of the 1,100 participating bookstores use Bookshop in addition to their own websites, while 400 use Bookshop.org exclusively for their online sales. This makes sense since bookstores can make more money by selling direct to customers than by sharing the sale with another site. From a buyer perspective, I found the site confusing and clumsy. The site seems designed to assist buyers in discovering books, not bookstores. Looking at a typical book product page, I'm not sure how I support a bookstore with my purchase. Like a physical bookstore, books are displayed in genre or topic collections. For example, Warren Buffett's favorite books. When I looked at the business books page, there were three such collections on that category page. Then the rest of the business books seem to be randomly displayed. A Poets and Writers article reports that Bookshop hopes to persuade Amazon customers who don't buy from indie bookstores to change their habits and buy books on Bookshop to support these indie stores. They plan to accomplish this by working with major media outlets to link to Bookshop rather than Amazon. Turning those customers is going to be quite a feat. Though Amazon does not release sales data, according to a Publishing Perspectives article in 2020, Amazon commands a share of about 50% of all print books sold. While I can't predict the future of Bookshop, I can predict that they have a massive uphill climb if they hope to make a dent in Amazon's market share. The biggest problem with bookshop and indie bookstores is that they sell the commodity book products that Amazon does. Is the we're not Amazon message enough to sway large amounts of the population to stop buying books on Amazon? And I have to ask, why do you even want to be in an indie bookstore? My statistical heart was thrilled to find some research done by marketing and CRM company Wampley on how much local independent bookstores make. They analyzed sales transaction data at over 1,100 indie bookstores for 2018 before the pandemic era. Certainly a significant sample. Here are the key stats relevant to our discussion here. The average revenue per day is $697. The average ticket per sale is $48.24. The average transactions per day are 14. And the number of indie bookstores that are closed on Sunday is 54%. I have to say that I had to look at these stats twice to make sure I wasn't reading them wrong. And the sales data is before overhead expenses for a brick and mortar operation are subtracted from the revenue. Of course, averages are calculated with every data point from highest to lowest. I would have loved to have seen the median, 
But for the sake of this discussion, let's just say that these stats are not impressive. This tells us that many indie bookstores are really small businesses who are very dependent on retail foot traffic. I am not disrespecting indie bookstores or bookstores in general. Some of them are truly committed to their customers and their communities. But if you are hoping that they will be a growing or consistent source of sales for your self-published books, you need to understand the current retail environment they operate in and adjust your expectations accordingly. Please stop the madness of chasing bookstore sales for your self-published book and concentrate on building your author platform, which is really the only long-term book sales strategy for self-publishing. I hope you found that helpful, and if you did, please rate, review, and subscribe to The Heidi Thorne Show on whatever podcast app you like to use. I'm on all the major ones, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you like the video better, you just have to subscribe to my Heidi Thorne YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell to get an alert when a new video is up. I would appreciate it if you would share the audio or the video with your friends on social media. And my self-published books are not found in indie bookstores, but are found on Amazon, Audible and Apple Books. All you have to do is go to one of those sites, type in my name, Heidi Thorne, and my author page will come up with a list of all available titles. If you'd like to connect with me, my website is HeidiThorne.com, and I'm most active on the social channels of Instagram and TikTok at, at Heidi Thorne. Thank you so much for listening and for your support. I'll look forward to talking with you again in the next episode, and in the meantime, have a great day.